Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Uh, let's start episode uh, 222 of Ask Vidas and uh, Osha podcast. This question was sent by Samuel. And he struggles with uh, recognizing patterns in the form of chords, complete hand independence, and sight reading harmonies, especially hymns. Osha, I think uh, most of his struggles are related to chords and uh, harmony skills, right? Yes. Um, it's not an easy skill to develop, though. True, true. It, it takes perseverance and time. That's right. Uh, where should she, he start? Uh, what's the first step would be? Uh, probably he has you know, to take some, some, some music theory. Basic music yes. theory training, like um, our basic chord workshop, where I teach the chords and inversions of three note chords and four note chords. Even the ninth chord, which is a five note chord. True. Afterward, afterwards, he will be ready to go into probably more advanced um, harmony. Yes. Playing with two hands, not one. That's right. And you no, know, first of all, you just have to start to recognize chord patterns when you look at the score. And only after a few years, you might recognize them while playing. I remember John from Australia in in our long-term uh, correspondence wrote a few times that he, after studying those chords, in theory he started to notice them in practice in the in his compositions that he's playing. But little by little, maybe not even in compositions, but especially in hymns. True. At first, he said, "Oh, it's a dominant chord," or "Oh, it's a modulation. That's why we have F sharp." You know, things like that. Uh, little by little, the new world starts to open up for him. True, but it's a slow process. In any way, you know, you have to spend quite a bit of time with it. Of course, it's different for everyone. For us, it was very systematic training, and we spent 12 years studying at the national level art school, right? Where each grade we had to to study air training and then later uh, music theory and then later um, harmony so do you remember back in your childhood Osha were you conscious of those harmonies in your pieces that you were playing no not at all because even though we received such a you know professional Training in all those music theory disciplines, I think that the main mistake and the weakness of our school training was that we very rarely applied the theory in practice. Somehow these two performance and theory existed on their own. And only later on, when I became an adult, I myself you know, started to draw conclusions and to search for the right ways or you know, better ways, mm-hmm. combining theory and practice. The same for me. I think the first piece that I played on the organ, that was one of the choral preludes from Orgel Buchlein. I think it was uh, Jesu Meine Freude by Bach I was worrying about uh, putting hands and feet together but not about chords and how the pieces put together yes 
But I think understanding that comp compositional structure, you know, and seeing the meaning and under the notes is very important. Especially when we teach adults, they have more developed sense of motivation. Yes, and especially when you are playing like choral-based works, because we also have a text somewhere, you know, beneath those musical notes. And that also changes a lot. Sometimes you can even ask why is this chord, colorful chord, here uh, and discovered because of the text. True. So it, it, it is important to know what you are playing and to understand chords. Mm -hmm. It's good that Samuel is interested in that. Somehow it's not a universally loved thing, analytical approach to music. And it's just too bad. Because if we would look at the Middle Ages, when the university system started, started going in, in Europe, uh, actually music was a subject of science. And it was taught together with the math. Exactly. There is even a, a quote, a very famous quote about musicians and, and uh, probably people who can understand music, which is called Musicorum and Cantorum Magna Est Distantia. Could you translate it for everybody to understand? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to to look up. Yeah. Between musicians and singers, it's a great distance. Uh, which means that musicorum et cantorum magna es distantia. In Latin, isti dicunt illis ciunt que componit musica, nam qui facit quod non sapit definitur bestia. This is the quote by Guido of Arezzo, and I'm f I found it in uh, in Christoph Wolf's uh, book about Johann Sebastian Bach, the learned musician. And let me tell a couple words about no Guido from Arezzo mm -hmm. city. He was actually very famous for creating the musical notation system. So this is really one of the you know, most most important names in the history of music. So you need to, to know who he is. Exactly. Um, he created... Uh, the system that we use uh, today, the solfege. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's translate this passage uh, by Guido of Arezzo, which is uh, cited in, in Christoph Wolf's book about Bach, which everybody interested in Bach's music should read. And uh, it, it goes as follows. Singers and musicians, they are different as night and day. One makes music, one is wives, wise and knows what music can comprise. But those who do what they know least are to be designated beast. Uh, That's a strong word. In Latin, beast is bestia. Yes. So the meaning of this passage is basically the person who doesn't understand what he is doing is like an animal. <laughs> wow. Right? Well... In those terms. That's a strong word. So... I it, would not put them like that. But that's what Guido in Middle Ages wrote. I know. Right? It's, Way back. It was like a satire, right? Uh, humor, a little bit. So... It, but it just means that the, how... Uh, this ancient centuries old battle between musicians and singers between scholars and and performers went 
all the time. True, and I think that's a nice quotation that, you know, Christoph Wolf chose for his book that he edited about Bach, the learned musician, because in that book, you know, all the all the articles and essays, we just help you to discover or rediscover Bach and to show, you know, behind his his course what, what he really did and how fascinating his music was, full of all those symbols and, you know, entire different world. Yeah. So, although um, although Samuel's interest in chords uh, is not perhaps related to to Guido's uh, quotation, of course, not at all. He just is interested in, in knowing and uh, recognizing chord patterns just intuitively. It says that it's extremely important, too, for everyone, for everyone who is listening to this, to understand uh, the meaning of, of those chords and structures, how the pieces put together. Basically, this is the preliminary step before you start to create your own music. And let's face it, not everyone is willing to create his or her own music, right, Osha? True. And one of the reasons, I guess, I suspect, is that it's not because of talent or lack of talent, it, not at all. It's because lack of knowledge. No, lack of knowledge how those master masterworks were created in the past, which could serve as models for us today. We should not, of course, copy them today, note by note, but use ancient techniques in a new way, combine and mix them together and create something new and original this way. That's right. So I think uh, even though Samuel doesn't uh, probably even uh, aware, isn't aware of, of, of his further steps, but his motivation to learn chords will definitely lead him into a realm of creating music too, either on paper or on the instrument as an improvisation. Yes. Isn't it wonderful? Absolutely. Amazing world. Every day you can learn something new from the treasury of organ music. And we wish you that. And please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. This was Vidas. And Osha. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.